Governor, are you prepared to take the constitutional oath? I am. If you place your left hand on the Bay of Bible and raise your right hand and repeat after me, I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Now, I congratulate you, sir. of your life I have only one request of your life
<laughs> well, the alcohol knows he's ready. the sun and the rain to make a tree grow and the moon if it takes the moon and the tide to make the sea flow The sea flow, but uh, what does it take to love a child? First Lady Nancy Reagan's civic work is truly laudable. 
having helped get the foster grandparent program off the ground more than 15 years ago, her commitment to those in need is apparent. She has made visits to wounded Vietnam vets, senior citizens, hospitals, and schools for physically and emotionally handicapped children. Mrs. Reagan's benevolent disposition has carried over into yet another important cause, youth drug abuse. A crusader for stopping drug abuse among young Americans, Mrs. Reagan once said, drug abuse is one of the most serious problems our country faces today. We are in danger of losing our whole next generation. Today, we extend our appreciation to Mrs. Reagan for her efforts in helping to curb drug abuse. We have for you, Mrs. Reagan, this very special award which reads, National Religious Broadcasters extends this award to Nancy Reagan for her outstanding contribution in her drug abuse programs for the youth of America. Thank you, First Lady Nancy Reagan. Receive this for many reasons, but uh, I, I think that the work that you do is so, is so marvelous and should be honored every day. So to get this award from you means a great deal to me. And I'm, I'm very appreciative. Thank you very much. In 1979, it brought it down to 5%, and we are holding it to 7%. You were getting laughs. Two days early. <laughs> Aren't they Happy coming birthday. fast enough without moving it up? Hold the candle out. Make a wish. Make a wish. Mm. <laughs> you, should, you should know what I'm wishing. It's easy enough to guess, sir. It's easy enough to guess. <laughs> now. Now. See, you don't have to share that little one. Look what's there. Uh, it's got football bladders in it, blown up. They explode. No, it's from me. No, I said the cake. <laughs> well, it says, I love you, and it says, what more can I say? Happy birthday. And then it says, Guess who, but she already just gave it away. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> 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 you want to finish your statement about unemployment? I think this ends the question. <laughs> oh, I have to make the first cut. Make a wish. Again, a wish. Any wish you can tell us, Mr. President? Uh, no, you can't tell what you wish because then it won't come true. And you have to take the first piece. I have to take the first piece. I'll spoil my lunch. I'd have cut it smaller if I'd have known that. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Reagan, any uh, resolutions you want him to make on his birthday? Anything you want him to do differently? I think he's doing just fine. <laughs> well, maybe this would be a good time for you to tell him whether you think he should run against. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, no. <laughs> you, you're not getting too old to run again, are you, sir? What? You're not getting too old to run again, are you, sir? How would you like a piece of cake, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Right what, the... what kind is it? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you bake it yourself? As a matter of fact, Sam, since she cut that one smaller, here, take mine, and I'll trade. No, 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 no. that's bad luck. <laughs> you, Sam, or the kids? Do you feel up to six more years, Mr. President? I have learned not to argue with her superstitions. Hey, give Sam and Chris. Here, Chris, Chris how about a piece of cake for you? <laughs> Maybe if I ask a question, I can get it. You're right. <laughs> but you understand we won't sell out for a piece of cake. <laughs> no deals. Oh, you sold out for less than that. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that since the cake came in, came in, everything's off the record. Well, you're still in the oh. <laughs> you, uh, we won't tell see these microphones. <laughs> as far as we know, they're still on. I thought you were giving them to me. <laughs> well, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any observations on your birthday, Mr. President? I mean, any, any, uh, any thoughts about the future? It's a softball question. <laughs> it is. Uh... I have to tell you that, that there's no experience like watching yourself on film that you've done 30 years ago. It's an experience. <laughs> but I know you've obviously been hearing a lot of political speeches, but I'd like to shift gears with you for just a minute if I could because this gives me the chance to say something to you that I've wanted to say for a long time. I'd like to thank you very much for all the support and the hard work and the kindnesses that you've extended to us over a period of years. And I know that you're not aware of it, but I drew on your strength many times, particularly the first year in the White House. I'm very grateful to you for that. And it did help me a lot. 
And I know I'll be, I'll be drawing on, on it again and depending on you again in the months to come. So I'll thank you in advance for that. And let's make it one more for the Gipper. And thank you.
and commitment have not gone unnoticed. You have a special place in our hearts. And now, before I sign the proclamation, I'd like to introduce the champ who's been leading this battle, Nancy. <laughs> beginning of this year, someone asked me if I wanted to make a New Year's wish, and I said yes, and it was that I'd like to see every young person in the world join the Just Say No to Drugs Club. Well, just the fact that Congress has proclaimed Just Say No Week, and in light of all the activities taking place, it seems that my wish is well on its way to coming true. I'm so proud of all the young people, the parents, the citizens in cities and towns across the nation, the government, and everyone else who's helping to create what I believe is the final solution to this problem. And that's a way to teach every one of our children to just say no to drugs. The future of the world lies in their hands, and we must all come together in their name to end drug and alcohol abuse once and for all. Again, thank you so much for what you're doing and for joining us here today. Thank you. And now, and now I'll sign the proclamation. Well, thank you, Joe Riley. My fellow Americans, thank you for joining Nancy and me on this festive evening. The menorah stands lighted in Lafayette Park, for this is also the time of Hanukkah, and this season is rich in the meaning of our Judeo-Christian tradition. In a moment, we'll be lighting the national Christmas tree, carrying forward what is now a 62-year tradition first begun by Calvin Coolidge. Tonight, we're drawn in warmth to one another as we reflect upon the deeply holy meaning of the miracle we shall soon celebrate. We know that Mary and Joseph reached the stable in Bethlehem sometime after sunset. We do not know the exact moment the Christ child was born, only what we would have seen if we'd been standing there as we stand here now. And as we light this magnificent tree, may all the youthful hope and joy of America light up the heavens and make the angels sing. Merry Christmas, and God bless you all. And now we're going to light the tree.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're working on that. I'll give her the mic in just a minute, but uh, I'll say welcome home. And uh, in view of all this, I'm trying to see if I can't scare up a little something that I could stay in the hospital for. <laughs> but God bless you all, and God bless you all, and thank you very much. And wouldn't you like to thank all these wonderful people, too? Well, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you very, very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very touched, foster grandparent program people and the Just Say No kids and everybody else, and I'm very, very happy to be home, very. <laughs> well, well, bless you all, and I'm going to get her upstairs now. <laughs> All right. Thank you all very much.
Late night. Late night. Good night. Did you have a good time? Did you? Yeah. I did. Did you try to sing? Did you sing? I didn't know the, I didn't know the words. <laughs> Were you surprised by uh, how eagerly they joined in the singing? Well, all the whole party joined in the singing. It evidently is a, a very well-known Russian song. I thought Van Cliver was just great. First time in nine years that he's played. I mean, really, it's. What did you and she talk about last night? Did you have a chance to? Um... Last, well, see, she was with my husband. Well, did you ask me your husband what they talked about Mr. Gorbachev? Um. Well, we talked about. Let me see. We talked about uh, our coming to uh, Moscow. Where did you set a date? No, <laughs> I really leave that to other people. Is it just that you will be going? I don't know. Did he have a son? Did he have an itinerary for you when you arrived there? What, tell you what you should see? No. He, well, he thought I should saw, see. So, thought I should see uh, the Kremlin. I said I'd like to see Leningrad and uh, Lemmertage. Um, then we told that story, and I told you. <laughs> um, then we got into a lot of discussions with um, uh, Dick Cheney and Richard Pearl. Uh, it was a very did he seem to be having lively a good, conversation. Did he seem to be having a good time? Did he laugh a lot? Did he? Yeah, no. Good morning. I would say that this is a typical picture of the 20th century. Right. <laughs> right. 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 It is a whole generation of Indians. Right. Yes. 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 Right. Y
Нет, не жили, да? Вашингтон, а, Линкольн жили, жили, да? А Вашингтон не а Эдмонд был первым американским президентом, который был первым. Когда идет это? Все, Джефферсон. Are these old enemies becoming new friends? Are you making progress on a supportive start deal, Mr. President? Can you get a withdrawal made on Afghanistan? Secretary Gorbachev, will you give a withdrawal made on Afghanistan? <laughs>
were done by the flower shop and they're made of tubing and wood. Right. And, and uh, about 40 professional uh, florists came from all over the country and volunteered their time and efforts to help with the design. Thank you. First of, oh. <laughs> First of all, to all the kids and the NBA, you are fantastic. <laughs> I'm very proud of each, each and every one of you. And all the rest of you here tonight, I think you've just seen what someday will save this country from drugs. Our children and their ability to say no. And we are making... And we are making progress among the young, and we're making that progress with the help of organizations like the National Basketball Association. In 11 cities across the country tonight, NBA teams are showing their support for the Just Say No campaign. And I can't help but think of a young man who should be playing on one of these courts tonight. But Len Bias never reached the NBA. He never had a chance to suit up. He was a first round draft choice of cocaine and it killed him. Len Bias never got the message that drugs are dangerous. The NBA is helping make sure that other young people do get that message. In addition to the NBA and the team owners, I also want to thank players like Wayman Tisdale. <laughs> who are doing so much to help. You know, I, I look up to Wayman in more ways than one. So to all of you, thank you for su your support and to the kids for just saying no. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. 
belle parole, ça c'est la plus belle parole. I, I came over on such short notice that I haven't had a chance to read my remarks yet, but the speech writers usually do a pretty good job, so I'll just begin. I've known the guest of honor for many years. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. She was once one of the original members of the Reagan inner circle. Well, I can't dispute that. Who's been involved in some of the most delicate White House matters, such as high-level staff. Maybe I better do this by myself. <laughs> in fact, I've been thinking for several days about what exactly I wanted to say today, how to put Nancy's role in my life in a perspective for you. But what do you say about someone who gives your life meaning? What do you say about someone who's always there with support and understanding? Someone who makes sacrifices so that your life will be easier and more successful. But what you say is that you love that person and treasure her. I, I simply can't imagine the last eight years without Nancy. The presidency wouldn't have been the joy it's been for me without their there beside me. And that second floor living quarters in the White House would have seemed a big and lonely spot without her waiting for me every day at the end of the day. You know, she once said that a president has all kinds of advisors and experts who look after his interest when it comes to foreign policy or the economy or whatever, but no one who looks after the his needs as a human being. Well, Nancy has done that for me through recuperations and crises. Every president should be so lucky. I think... <laughs> I think it's all too common in marriages that no matter how much partners love each other, they don't thank each other enough. And I suppose I don't thank Nancy enough for all that she does for me. So Nancy, in front of all your friends here today, let me say thank you for all you do. Thank you for your love. And thank you for just being you. Oh, dear. You get a <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eight years ago, eight years ago, I stood here with my family in this same dress, as a matter of fact. I do hang on. <laughs> when my husband was nominated for the first time, and four years ago, I stood up here and thanked you for all that you've done for me, not knowing that I was going to have a chance to do it again. But you've given us such a wonderful life a life that I really never dreamed possible. And it's the most extraordinary feeling to represent a nation and its people. And I can never thank you enough for all the experiences and memories that you've made possible. The last eight years have been the most fulfilling ones of my life. Tom mentioned the drug letters that I have received and the program that's meant so much to me. But you really gave me that chance. And you really gave me the chance to be more than I thought I could be and brought something out in me that I didn't know was there. And you helped me, and I thank you a great deal for that.
And you've always been there for us. It's true there were some rough times for my husband and me. But as I said to you four years ago, I always felt that I could draw on you for your support and your affection. And I did draw on you a great deal more than you knew. And I thank you for that, too. Now, I'm sure that this will be the last time that I'll speak before a Republican convention. My husband's and my time on center stage of Republican politics is passing. One era is ending, another is beginning. But before I go, I want to thank you for all the years that you've worked for us and on our behalf, so many years, really. I'll miss you. I'll never forget you. So, good night and God bless. I sign the bill, I want to take a moment to thank a very special person. A moment ago, I referred to her as the co-captain. Because of her personal commitment at a time when many others simply chose to ignore the world's drug abuse problems, we were able to begin turning the tide. Her campaign to raise our nations and the world's consciousness about illegal drug use has won to the respect and admiration of people the world over. Nancy for your tireless efforts on behalf of all of us and the love you've shown the children in your Just Say No program. I thank you and personally dedicate this bill to you. And with great pleasure, I will now sign the every day. Ha, ha, ha.